In the preceding video, we delved into the integration of eTrade with TradingView automation. However, one crucial aspect was left unexplored, the setup of the API for eTrade automation. This video aims to address this gap by elucidating the setup prerequisites, detailing their alignment with OAuth, guiding through manual testing procedures, and culminating in the demonstration of sample Python code for automated API execution. Join me in unraveling the steps required to seamlessly configure eTrade API integration for a streamlined and efficient automation process. Before delving directly into the API setup, it's beneficial to acquire some foundational knowledge about the protocols employed by eTrade for the configuration. While not unique to eTrade, understanding these protocols is crucial for most API setups. Accessing any API typically involves a series of significant steps, with authentication and authorization being key components. Successful authentication grants access to the resource, while authorization dictates which resources can be accessed. Essentially, it's about validating identity and defining permissible actions. Though various protocols exist, one of the most widely used is OAuth. eTrade utilizes OAuth 1.0, an authentication and authorization protocol based on request and access tokens. Despite its deprecated status, eTrade and some others still employ it. OAuth functions exclusively for web applications and isn't suitable for mobile applications. While it offers robust capabilities, its complexity may pose challenges for user-friendliness. It's worth noting that OAuth 2.0, the widely adopted successor, has superseded OAuth 1.0, marking a significant advancement in authentication and authorization protocols. Let's talk some details about OAuth 1.0. It has got three stages. First is to obtain an unauthorized request token with your API key. Then, you authorize that token using your login credentials. And exchange the token for an authorized access token. With this authorized token, you can access the resources. So, how it maps to eTrade API interface. Service provider is the eTrade. Consumer is your application or the script. And the user is you. As I mentioned earlier, why OAuth 1.0 is not user-friendly, since we have an intermediate web interface requirement, where this authentication is required through eTrade login. These are the APIs mapped to each layer, which is defined in the eTrade documentation page. I will go through those in detail now. The eTrade documentation meticulously maps these APIs, and I'll guide you through each one. To access them, visit developer.etrade.com and select the documentation link at the top of the page. This comprehensive page contains details on all the APIs supported by eTrade. I'll navigate through each API pertinent to the authorization section, with clear documentation for each, outlining both request and response elements. Sequentially, I'll explain how to access specific resources, such as retrieving quotes. Before delving into the APIs, the initial step is obtaining the API key from eTrade, serving as the starting point. To do this, visit the Getting Started link at the top of the page. Click on the provided link to acquire the API key. If you've already logged in, it will directly take you to the page, otherwise, log in to your eTrade account. Additionally, if you already possess an API key and need to retrieve it, this is the place to do so. The API key information will appear in a pop-up with a green screen at the top of the page. Unfortunately, for security reasons, I can't demo this section. Now, let's dive into manually executing these APIs using Postman. I've positioned the browser on the left and Postman on the right, which is utilized for crafting API requests and testing them before initiating automation. In the eTrade documentation, I'll be performing all the authorization APIs, starting with the Request for Access API, specifically the Get Quotes API. In Postman, I've already established the settings required for these four APIs. To safeguard sensitive information, such as the API key and secret obtained from eTrade, I've created environment variables to store them. This way, I can pass them in the API requests without revealing the confidential details. The initial API is the get request token. If you compare the documentation with the Postman setup, you'll notice they align. It's a get request with parameters, employing OAuth 1.0 as the authorization type. Keep the signature method as the default. Supply the consumer key and secret through the variables, leaving the access token and secret fields empty. Set the callback URL to OOB. That's all. Click Send, and you'll receive the request token and secret necessary for constructing the subsequent URL. Moving on, the subsequent phase involves authorizing the application. As mentioned earlier, this is accomplished through a web URL rather than an API request. The key element here is your API key, 
which I'm concealing in this explanation. The token, on the other hand, is the one obtained from the Get Request Token API. Construct the URL using the key and token, then press Enter. This action will direct you to the eTrade login page. Once logged in, you'll navigate to the Terms and Agreement page. Since I'm already logged in, it redirected me directly without requiring another login. Accept the terms, and you'll receive an identifier text. Now, we've successfully completed two steps, and the subsequent one is obtaining the access token, the final API in the authorization process. Again, this is a GET request, and the request parameters are similar to those in the request token step. However, this time, you need to pass the token and secret returned from the request token API. As this is an API request, the returned values need to be decoded using URL decoding, and then copied into the token and secret fields. Additionally, include the verifier, which is the text value obtained from the web authorization application step. Press Enter, and you'll receive another token and secret. This pair will be utilized for accessing all the resources moving forward. Allow me to demonstrate how to access a resource API, I am going to demo the Get Quotes API. This, too, is a Get request. The only modification required from the Get Access Token step is updating the token and secret. Utilize the values returned from the Get Access Token API. Similarly, convert them to URL decoded format and paste them into the respective fields. Once completed, press Enter, and you'll receive the comprehensive quotes for the requested symbol. Now, let's implement this knowledge into automation using Python and some OAuth Python packages. The auth.py file contains the construction of API requests related to authentication and the parsing of responses. The chosen package for this purpose is rauth, specifically utilizing the OAuth 1 service module. To begin, initialize it with the relevant URLs, API key, and secret. Once initialized, you can proceed to use APIs such as get request token. Then, construct the URL for web-based authentication. This is the only step that requires manual intervention, as OAuth 1.0, as explained earlier, is not intended for non-web-based applications. The third step involves obtaining the access token. In the market.py file, there's a small function designed to retrieve quotes. In the main file, I initialize the authentication session. Once initialized, I use the same session to set the account and, finally, obtain the quotes. Let's witness this in action as the script is executed. As observed during script execution, for the second step, the script prints the constructed URL. This URL needs to be copied and pasted into the browser to obtain the verifier, which should then be copied and provided back to the script for the subsequent step. Eventually, we successfully retrieved the quotes for Apple stock. Let's quickly verify if the price aligns with Yahoo Finance. Indeed, it matches. A couple of points to keep in mind. The access token remains valid for two hours of idle time and expires if no resources are accessed. However, you can use the renew access token functionality to obtain a new one if it expires. Additionally, regardless of renewal, you need to authorize the application daily, and this authorization resets at midnight CST time. Now that you're acquainted with the basics of OAuth 1.0, understand how to map it to E-Trade actors, and grasp the corresponding APIs, you're well equipped to implement your automation. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you. See you in another video.